Hey, this is Ron Coddington from Military Images Magazine, uh, coming to you live with um, some news and uh, information about the Civil War. Um, I was thinking uh, today, I was, I was doing some research this morning, that uh, we often think about the war because of its duration, um, four years that tested the endurance and the fabric of society, um, our ability to survive such a tragic event. We don't always think about the fact that back in 1861, when the war began, the conventional wisdom was that the Civil War wasn't going to be a long lasting thing. It might not even have been a war. It was just maybe one battle and the whole thing would be over a few weeks few months, uh, and not the major series of campaigns and brutal battles that it came to be. And so with this idea of a short set of hostilities in mind, um, that was the mindset of many Americans. And so in the Northern press, there is an interesting phenomenon attached to all of that, and that's this idea of when a, a well-known um, officer, uh, not the generals, um, a well-known mid-level officer um, died in battle or from some other situation, um, it became really big news. And these officers became martyrs uh, of a sort for the Union cause. And so... As I'm saying this, I'm realizing that there's a name that's probably coming to your mind. And that, of course, is Elmer Ellsworth, the famous uh, colonel of the 11th New York. Before that, he was the commander of the U.S. Zouave Cadets and had their amazing drill tour of the northern states in 1860. Uh, confidant of Lincoln, a young man with much promise for the war. He's uh, famously or infamously um, shot after hauling down a flag, a Confederate flag from an inn in Alexandria, Virginia. That's the name you know. That's the, that's the guy that you remember. That's not the man that I'm talking about tonight because there were others. There are other officers who also were made much of in the Northern press. Uh, and in fact, their names probably rose about as high as Ellsworth, although admittedly Ellsworth had serious name recognition from the year before and all of his events around the drill tour. But soldiers like the man that's pictured here were also quite well known, but for a very short period of time. Uh, his name was in the news for a few weeks. His death was lamented. There was outrage in the public. And then, of course, another officer would be killed. His name would be in the newspapers and the cycle would repeat. And this phenomenon continues on through the Battle of Gettys, pardon me, the Battle of Bull Run, and continues on through other battles of the Civil War. But during those early days of the war, when the idea of men being killed in battle was so new, these names attained a different height. And this idea of the martyr status was certainly part uh, of the popular culture. And so that takes us to this gentleman here, James Harmon Ward. The name doesn't sound familiar. I bet it doesn't ring a bell with most of you. It certainly didn't with me. And when I stumbled upon his name this morning, looking through newspapers and newspapers.com, I realized how much a part of the American story, the Union story, he was for a few weeks in June and July of 1861. So to appreciate Ward, you have to understand his backstory. Um, he was a little bit older. He was born in 1806. He was a midshipman in the Navy in October of 1845, when the U.S. Naval Academy opens in Annapolis, 
uh, Ward is considered one of the guys involved in the startup, one of the founders, if you will. That's 1845. 16 years later, early 1861, uh, January, February, March of 1861, as uh, Robert Anderson and the garrison at Fort Sumter are in trouble, uh, Gideon Wells, the Secretary of the Navy, summons Ward to Washington with the idea of a relief expedition that's going to go to Fort Sumter and bring supplies to the men. However, uh, General Winfield Scott gets, uh, hears of the idea, and he basically says, we have to cancel this because it's not going to work. Well, Ward is the guy who volunteers to lead that mission. And because of his, uh, his qualities as an officer, he's an obvious choice um, to, an obvious choice, uh, obvious naval choice to be able to do that. So he doesn't get that opportunity. Famously, Fort Sumter occurs, uh, Anderson surrenders the garrison, and the war begins in earnest. Ward proposes a new idea, um, a fleet of fast-moving ships that can keep an eye on Washington and patrol the rivers in Virginia to keep Confederate forces from coming in. Um, he creates this grouping of ships known as the Potomac Flotilla, and the Potomac Flotilla is doing its business uh, keeping Confederate forces at bay. In June 1st of 1861, uh, there's an action at Akea Creek in Virginia, which later on during the war is well known as a military base. Uh, but before that, in June of 1861, when the war is barely weeks old, uh, guns from Ward's ships silence the Confederate batteries that are located along Akea Creek. So it's June 1st. Uh, and to give you the perspective, we're less than two weeks after the killing of Elmer Ellsworth. So his death is still very fresh in the minds of the uh, American population. So June 1st, Akea Creek. A few weeks later, on June 27th, there's another naval battle against Confederates on shore. This is known as the Battle or the Affair of Matthias Point. And during that action, Ward sends a landing party to get Southern forces out of the way. Um, there's sniper fire, there's cannon fire, uh, a lot of action going on. And when I say a lot of action, it's a relatively small affair compared to what was to come later on in the war. But at this point, weeks into the war in 1861, this is a big, big event. So while he's on his flagship, which is called the Thomas Freeborn, a bullet strikes him and he falls to the deck. He's mortally wounded. Newspapers pick up this story in early July, right around July 4th, because he's mortally wounded. Word takes a little while to get out. And around Independence Day of 1861, that first Independence Day in a nation that's at war with itself, Ward is a big story in the newspapers. One of the stories is written by um, someone who was there, and he mentions, uh, that I'm going to quote you from a story here, um, talks about Captain Ward coming down and seizing a rifle from which he fired at the enemy. Uh, as well as the pilot grabbed the rifle and others grabbed rifles. The captain runs down to the forecastle deck and begins to sight the cannon. Uh, and here's where the quote comes in. Begins to sight the gun, first ordering it to be loaded with round shot. He had got the sight and was about to withdraw and give the word to fire when he, Ward, was struck by a bullet, saying to Harry Churchill, the boatswain's mate, Quote, Churchill, I am killed. He fell into Churchill's arms. And Churchill, of course, pulls the string with the other hand, throwing the shot clear among the enemy. A five-second shell and two rounds of grape were then ordered, fired from the bow gun, while the after gun fired about the same quantity. So here we have Harry Churchill. He's holding the turned out to be mortally wounded Ward in one arm, firing a cannon with the other. 
You might argue that Harry Churchill is a bit of a hero here, but it's war that gets all the attention. So the story goes on to talk about the captain being laid on the quarter deck. He's subsequently removed to a more convenient position. And the quote says, in removing him, he said, why remove me? I'm quite comfortable. Here, a lieutenant asked if he could do anything for him. Ward only said, raise my head a little higher. Soon after that, he passes away. And the end of the story talks about Ward, of course, establishing him as something of a martyr when the newspaper story says, thus fell in defense of the glorious stars and stripes, the noble, generous, and intrepid James Ward, the originator of the scheme of the flying flotilla. This is the Potomac flotilla. And who never spared himself in the performance of his duty, nor shrank from personal danger, though tender of the safety of his men. So thus is the end of James Harmon Ward of the U.S. Navy, the hero of the Battle of Matthias Point, the founder of the floating flotilla and an early martyr of the Union cause who has been long forgotten and overshadowed by Elmer Ellsworth. So that's this evening's story that I want to want to share with you and leave with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more videos. Check us out uh, on militaryimages.com uh, and uh, pardon me, Military Images magazine.com and uh, find us on Facebook and other social media sites. Take care. Have a great night.